So, like, if you're a single guy and you're thinking about taking a stroll through a mall, well, you might have to think again. You see, many malls are families only zones, and single men will be turned back at the door before they even enter. So, in order to be allowed in, a man actually has to be with either a female or some other type of family member. Okay, so if you're going to a public gathering outside in public, <sighs> no, it's not happening. Not in Saudi Arabia. I mean, like, all sorts of public gatherings are completely banned. From just like celebrations about anything to like peaceful protests. No, not in public in Saudi Arabia. Not gonna happen. And you know, when we go shopping, it's just as much for the ladies as it is for guys where we like to try on clothes to see if it fits well, to see if it actually looks good on our body. And that's how a lot of times we base what we buy at the stores. But you see in Saudi Arabia, when a woman goes to a store and they see something that they like and they go to the dressing room, they can't try on the clothes because it's like the thought of a woman taking off her clothes in public makes everybody go nuts. So I'm sorry ladies, you'll just have to just buy it based on how it looks and hopefully it fits well and hopefully you like it when you get home. Now for all you lovebirds out there, you may not like this one. Because florists in Saudi Arabia were actually forbidden from selling red roses on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. As well as gift shops, they were actually forbidden from selling anything that was shaped like a heart and girls were actually forbidden from wearing anything red to school. So if you actually broke this rule, you would risk being shut down. Like really your store would get shut down by the committee for the promotion of virtue and the prevention of vice. And you know, this group of people is often commonly referred to as the religious police. So yeah, if you're a female student, you went to school in a red shirt, Boom, you were sent home. You gotta change that bad boy. Now, it was not until the year 2017 where shops were actually allowed to sell red roses. So the spirit of Valentine's Day now actually has a glimmer of hope to survive and thrive in a country like Saudi Arabia. Now let's talk about women actually being forbidden to drive cars in Saudi Arabia. Now there's a fatwa, which is an Islamic ruling that states that women should not drive because if they do so, it could lead to the removal of their hijab or it could also lead to interactions with men as well as other taboo actions. Now, in case you didn't know, Saudi Arabia is the only country in the world that banned women from driving. But you see, this was the case up until last year. Now, the government used to claim that there was no law stopping women to drive. However, in Saudi Arabia, because the fatwas have the law of the land, it supersedes all other law. And just recently, June of 2018, Saudi Arabia actually lifted the ban for women to drive for the first time since the 1950s. Now for this next law, we visit the clothing and shopping stuff again. In Saudi Arabia, only women can work in lingerie stores. According to a report that was published by the Los Angeles Times, only women were allowed to work in lingerie shops. Now this law apparently is for women who would be uncomfortable buying underwear from men. I mean, like, I get it, you know, it's intimate apparel, you know, lingerie, underwear. I get it, yeah, women, it's not really a weird law, it's just a, yeah, okay, it's one of those interesting ones, one of these laws that have that gray area of, like, being interesting. It's not really weird or controversial, I, I don't think. But let me know what you think about that. Is that weird? Do you think that's controversial? Should men be allowed to work at female lingerie shops? Let me know down there. But there's a law that has been completely controversial since I can remember. So all women in Saudi Arabia are to have a male wali, which is an official guardian. And this is usually a father, maybe an uncle or husband or even a brother. Now, women are to have their guardians consent for any major activities, like if they want to travel or get a passport or even like getting divorced or getting married and signing other major contracts. But you see, in May of 2017, there was a small victory that was won when King Salman decreed that for some activities, let's say like going to university or getting a surgery, women didn't need the permission anymore from any kind of male relative or their husband. Now this next one has to do with clothing again. There's a lot of these interesting laws that deal with this. 
But in Saudi Arabia, women are forbidden from wearing clothes that show off their beauty or even wearing a lot of makeup. The law is very strict when it comes to the majority of women in uh, Saudi Arabia. And most of them wear an abaya, which is a long cloak and a headscarf. And the face doesn't necessarily need to be covered. But although if you're wearing clothes that may have a slit in it, showing off maybe a little too much skin, well, I don't know what is considered too much skin because like no skin is really showing. Uh-uh, you can't do that. As well as if you're seen with a lot of makeup on your face, you are gonna be harassed by the religious police. Now the second last law, another controversial one dealing with women and men relationships. Women are actually required to limit the amount of time that they spend with men that they're not related to. Most major buildings and offices and universities and things like that have separate entrances for men and women. Also, public transportation as well as parks and beaches, well, a lot of them, they segregate male and female. Now, if you're caught violating this, it's seen as unlawful mixing and you could be criminally charged, whether you're male or female. And for a final law, for all you dentists out there who, for some reason, may be thinking of starting a practice in Saudi Arabia, well, if you're not from there, Good luck. Being a dentist in Saudi Arabia is only exclusive to Saudi nationals. However, on the flip side, there are several other occupations and professions that are reserved to just non-Saudis only. Like if you work in a retail sales position or if you're human resources manager, you gotta not be a national of Saudi Arabia. All right guys, so that was 10 of the strangest, most interesting, and some were just completely controversial laws in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Now there's four names that you can actually call the country. The conventional long form name of Saudi Arabia is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The conventional short form is simply Saudi Arabia. The local long form is Al Mamlaka Al Arabia Al Saudia. The local short form is Al Arabia Al Saudia. Now did you guys know that Saudi Arabia is the largest country in the world without a river? The extensive coastlines on the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea make things great for shipping things like crude oil through the Persian Gulf and the Suez Canal. The modern Saudi state was founded in 1932 by a man named Abdulaziz bin Abdul Rahman. After a 30-year campaign to unify most of the Arabian Peninsula, one of his male descendants rules the country today as required by the country's 1992 basic law. Now in regards to princes of Saudi Arabia, there's over 7,000 Saudi Arabian princes alive today. And they estimate that the royal family is up to 30,000 people. Each of the princes in Saudi Arabia get top priority priority when it comes to getting jobs and professional opportunities. And they also must be hired before a non-prince could get a job. So let's talk about the driest places on earth. Where could that be? Obviously Saudi Arabia because we're talking about it. Most specifically, the Rub al Khali or the Empty Quarter. This is considered the driest place on Earth. Now this desert, which is 1,000 kilometers, which is roughly 620 miles long, and 500 kilometers, about 310 miles wide, occupies a large portion of Saudi Arabia. In regards to religion, Saudi Arabia is actually the birthplace of Islam, as well as it's the home to Islam's two holiest shrines, in Mecca and Medina. That's why the King of Saudi Arabia's official title is actually the custodian of the two holy mosques. And as a matter of fact, non-Muslims are prohibited to set foot on these two places. And since we are talking a little bit about religion, guys, I want to know down below in the comment section, what religion are you? Or if you're not a religious person, what do you identify as? The Islamic law is also the law of the land, which means judges give punishments based on their interpretation of the Quran, as well as all judges in Saudi Arabia are handpicked by the king. In regards to tradition, Saudis have great respect for privacy, so you never ever film a woman in public. As well as you can take photos of males, but you gotta get their permission first. It's not like in North America where the press has a free for all. Everybody's taking photos of everybody. Now to touch on a pretty controversial topic, women in Saudi Arabia cannot own property, leave the house, sign legal documents, 
or take classes without the permission of a male guardian like her husband, father, brother, or son. Also on top of that, in court, a woman's testimony is considered 50% less trustworthy than a male's testimony. Now in terms of wildlife, here we have the graceful Arabian oryx. It was actually listed as extinct in the wild by the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. Afterwards, it was reintroduced in the deserts of Saudi Arabia. The antelope was again reclassified as vulnerable. This animal was again reclassified as vulnerable, making it one of the few animals in the world whose population has increased after nearly disappearing. Now the title for the world's tallest building is always a title that some country wants to have. But in 2018, that title will belong to the Kingdom Tower, which is a centerpiece of a new city being built in Saudi Arabia. The Kingdom Tower is set to be the first building to ever reach more than a kilometer, which is about 3,280 feet into the air. And it will include a hotel, observatory, an office space, as well as have apartments for people that want to take a look at the view from so high up. Now, once construction for the tower is complete, it's likely that this will not be passed for a good while. As well as one analyst says that reaching one kilometer into the air like the Kingdom Tower would is currently the limit of what engineering can do. This project uh, is anticipated to finish uh, in 2018 this whole project, which is really uh, the 1,000 meter plus. Now before we go, let's talk a little bit about the water problems in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has an average summer temperature of 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for the past several decades, they have been using water from an aquifer, which is an underground body of rock that has been saturated with water. Aquifers are great sources of water, but the problem with them is that they refill slowly. And what started out as a viable water supply source has now depleted so much so that only 20% of it is left. Also, Saudi Arabia desalinates more water than any other country in the world. And desalination is pretty much just taking salt and other chemicals out of water. But even being the world leaders in desalination, that's still not enough. In order to meet the demand for fresh water, around $200 billion would need to be spent on desalination resources over the next decade. So starting at number 10, we have the religion. So both are Muslim majority countries in Iran, around 90 to 95 percent of Iranians associate themselves with the Shia branch of Islam, which is the official religion, and about 5 to 10 percent are Sunni and Sufi branches of Islam. The remaining 0.6 percent about that associate themselves with non-Islamic religions like Baha'is, Zoroastrians, Jews, Christians, as well as other smaller religious groups. Now over in Saudi Arabia, Islam is a state religion and its law requires all citizens to be Muslim. The official form of Islam is Sunni of the Hanbali school in its Salafi version. And by the way, Salafi is a branch of Sunni Islam. About 75 to 85% of Saudi Arabians are Sunni Muslims, 10 to 15% are Shia, and more than 30% of the population is made up of foreign workers who are mostly but not all Muslim. And number nine, when it comes to Islam, yeah, Islam is an export in these two countries. With their wealth, Saudi Arabia has spread its interpretation of Islam to various countries like Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, as well as other countries. Now, according to theweek.com, Saudis do this partially out of fear to combat the spread of Shiite Islam and ensure that the Islamic world is mainly Sunni. Now that Iran has agreed to reign in its nuclear program in return for lifting international economic sanctions, Saudi Arabia fears Iran will go after spreading the Shia Islam doctrine a lot more aggressively. And according to NPR reports, Iran too tried to export their views. Iran's leader Khomeini, his ideology apparently is of a clerical rule. Khomeini also claimed that he was the leader of the entire Muslim world, not just Iran. And of course that message was not well received among Sunni Muslim rulers 
in the Middle East. Number 8 brings us to their modesty guidelines. In Saudi Arabia, women are to wear a full loose cloak called an abaya and they're expected to cover up their heads as well. These rules are enforced by the mutawas which is the religious police and these guys they patrol the streets all the time, night and day. Women often try to protest this by leaving their faces uncovered as well as showing off a little bit more skin than usually permitted. Over in Iran, even when you go to the Imam Khomeini International Airport in Tehran, there's a sign that says, respected ladies, please observe Islamic dress code. So officially this is interpreted as either a full chador or a loose fitting outfit called a mantu. Depending on the city, Iranian women, much like the women in Saudi Arabia, they want a little bit more freedom, show a little bit more skin even. Today more and more women are letting their head covers go in order to protest these strict guidelines. Next up is unchecked authority. Both Iran and Saudi Arabia are ruled by leaders with virtually unchecked authority. There's Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, he's been Iran's supreme leader since 1989. And King Salman has ruled Saudi Arabia since January of 2015. Both Iran and Saudi Arabia emphasize moral qualities in selecting their leaders and both emphasize that there is no difference between the ruler and the common people of the land. In Iran, the supreme leader is empowered to provide political and religious leadership in the absence of the 12th Imam. Both Iran's supreme leader and Saudi Arabia's king hold substantial authority over the military and other branches of government. And they're both given the task of ruling according to Islam. And as a matter of fact, that brings us to our legal system. So both countries refer to Sharia law. Over in Saudi Arabia, the primary source of law is Islamic Sharia, and that's taken from the teachings of the Quran as well as the Sunnah, which are the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad. What makes Saudi Arabia unique from the other modern Muslim states is that Sharia is not codified. This allows judges to use their own reasoning to make legal decisions. Saudi judges generally follow the Hanbali school of jurisprudence, and that can be found in pre-modern texts. Now, when you travel over to Iran, Iran has a constitution and the council interprets the constitution and can also veto the parliament. So if a law is viewed as not being in line with the constitution or Sharia law, it would then have to go back to the parliament for revision. So again, they do vary in how they use Sharia law, but both countries, they do refer to it. Number five brings us to the banning of homosexuality. So both Saudi Arabia and Iran have clamped down down hard on homosexuality. Over in Saudi Arabia, it has objected to LGBT rights as being a part of the UN's global goals and also has taken action against gay marriages. Homosexuality is illegal under Saudi Arabia's law. In both Iran and Saudi Arabia, punishment can be very steep for this perversion as it's labeled, which is considered to be a severe crime. Now, I know of course we have to talk about oil. They both are leaders when it comes to oil reserves and oil serving as a top export. Saudi Arabia is the leading global exporter of oil. But the oil reserves in Saudi Arabia, however, are the second largest in the world. And it's estimated to be just under 300 billion barrels. And for Iran, it's estimated to have the fourth largest oil reserve in the world with around 160 billion barrels. The third similarity is their relationship to the United States. As America closest Arab ally in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia has had a lot of US military support and has influenced American foreign policy. Lucky for Saudi Arabia, the United States hasn't been on very friendly grounds with Iran, especially since 1979, the revolution that happened. Now the power balance, however, shifted in the year 2015 when President Barack Obama of the United States reached a historic agreement with Iran that limits Iran's ability to require nuclear weapons. In return for Iran's compliance with the terms of the deal, the US and other world powers must lift economic sanctions on Iran. So although Iran is not exactly in a position like Saudi Arabia and their relationship with the United States, that could all change once the sanctions are lifted. Because it'll definitely be beneficial for US and Iran to be in a friendly relationship. Or a much friendlier relationship I should say. Now for number two. 
two. Now with all these similarities getting a bit serious and heavy at some points, I thought I'd throw in one with a little bit of humor. Okay, so both Saudi Arabia and Iran, they aren't that good at football. Not that no one in the country is good. I'm talking about like how each of these countries match up on a world scale against other nations. So Saudi Arabia's best efforts in the World Cup came in 1994 when Saheed Al-Awairan, he scored one of the greatest goals in World Cup history. However, in 2002, the Germans crushed them 8-0. Similarly, Iran has not had that great of a track record in the World Cup, and both of these countries have qualified five times in the World Cup. And the final similarity is the currency name. So the Latin word regalus, meaning royal, is the origin of the Iranian real, as well as Oman uses a real as well. That's spelled R-I-A-L. Countries like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, of course, and Yemen, they all use a currency called the real, spelled R-I-Y-A-L. And also before the Euro, Spain used the reals as well, spelled R-E-A-L. So both these countries, yeah, they use the exact same currency. Of course, the value of the currencies varies from country to country and the spelling of the currency as well because they speak different languages. Saudi Arabia has 830,000 square miles or 2,149,690 square kilometers in total land area. And this makes it the 12th largest country in the world. And it is the largest country in the Middle East, about one quarter of the size of the entire United States. And within that landscape, it has a population density of 15 people per square kilometer. And the entire population of the country totals 34 million people, making it the 40th most populated country in the world. In Saudi Arabia, the left hand is considered to be the dirty hand. Why? Well, because the left hand is typically used to clean yourself after you go to the bathroom. So attempting to shake someone's hand with your left hand or even waving at somebody with your left hand, it could be considered an insult. So sorry lefties out there, you may want to just start using your right hand. Practice from now if you ever plan to ever visit Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia also has the largest camel market in the world. It's called the Bereda Camel Market and camels and everything related to camels go on sale exactly at 6 a.m. every single day and hundreds of camels are sold each day. Saudi Arabia is also the country at the center point of Islam, quite literally. So you know how Muslims follow the five pillars of Islam, right? Well, performing Hajj, that's one of the five pillars of Islam and this requires Muslims from all around the world to travel to Mecca and approximately 2 million people make this trip every single year but more accurately though Hajj is a pilgrimage made to Kaaba which means house of Allah which is in the city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. And by the way, it's only if you're able to do this. So people who are in extreme poverty or just too old or physically unable to do the pilgrimage, they don't have to do it. But for other Muslims, it's a requirement. Motorists in Saudi Arabia have invented this dangerous but like really exciting new driving sport. It's called sidewalk skiing where drivers balance a car on its side while the car is still in motion. Now, I'm not brave enough to try that because what happens if I tip over? <laughs> for real but if you're brave enough and have the cash for a pretty expensive car repair sure I mean go ahead I won't judge you In Saudi Arabia, primary education up until high school education is open to everybody and it's completely free. But not only that, also education including college and postgraduate schooling is totally free in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is also a prohibition state and it's not legal to drink alcohol in the country. However, amateur beer and wine making in Saudi Arabia is a pretty minor industry among many expats that live in the country. And there's a full range of spirits that are available on the black market. So yeah, you can definitely drink, but you're just doing that at your own risk. Now, Saudi Arabia is a country that makes up the majority of the Arabian Peninsula, and that's the world's largest peninsula. And due to its size and its location, many people sometimes consider it a subcontinent of Asia. The national language in Saudi Arabia is Arabic, and there's also many words in English that derive from the Arabic language, including words like alchemy, chemistry, alcohol, alcohol, 
Algebra, Alkaline, Almanac, Arsenal, Assassin, Candy, Cypher, Coffee, Guitar, and many more. Now the final thing I want to share with you about Saudi Arabia in this episode, I'm going to end off on a pretty fun note. So back in the year 1985, right, Prince Salman became the first Saudi the first Arab and the first Muslim to travel in space when he traveled on the US Space Shuttle Discovery. He helped to deploy a satellite for the Arab Satellite Communications Organization with NASA.